Mrs. Green, miss. You know what I'm talking about, David? Yes, Greg. The only sand with the grain, not against it. And it's going to make your work a heck of a lot easier. I'm hot. Well, take your snowsuit off, then. Won't get him here any quicker. I gotta be ready. Well, there's only one thing will take your mind off that. Work. Here. You try, Sandy. Now, you remember what I said about the grain? That's it. How come you can't drive me? Because we work Saturday night. I told you that once. You but... told me that a hundred times. You're not kidding. Why don't you try helping with the dishes for once in your life? Daddy would have driven me. You don't remember your daddy. I remember everything. I even remember being a little baby before I left. I even remember being in the womb. You still are. Got it! Thanks a lot for taking her, Thomas. No trouble. Hey, Brenda, mind the baby tonight? What time? Eight o'clock. If I get the dishes done by then. Have a good hockey game. Come on, you guys. Dub -a -dub -dub. <laughs> Carrot, 49 cents. Ketchup, 229. Make sure that you get Big Newton, $1.89. Hey, Mary, where's the tie? Biscuits, $1.69. More biscuits, $1.79. That's a $400.55. Dot, you're so stupid. I'm not. Look, I'm in a hurry. Hey, could you check that over, honey? Come on, we gotta get going, kids. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hello? Oh, uh, listen, I'm busy right now. Could I call you back in 10? Okay. Bye-bye. Who's that? Where? On the phone. Oh, just my boyfriend. Oh, yeah, well, just tell him to bring some detergent when he comes to visit. <laughs> hey, have fun. Hey, Scott, you got your gloves? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Someday you can show your little boy how to do this. And you can show his little boy, and you can show his little boy. And then you know what, Clint? Yeah, he can show his little boy. Are they going to be here soon? Oh, you'll see. I ain't ever been wrong. No, Clint. Oh, Scott. Are you ready? Yes. Listen, I got something for you. Ah, there he is. I thought you'd right. never get here. Now, the word you're looking for is hello. Hi, <laughs> Cookie. How's Marin? Oh, she's busy in the store. Oh, I see behind the door. Oh, don't do that, Karen. Yeah, come on, kids. We better get going. Give you a good boy. Listen to what Mr. Novak says. Tell that to Scotty. Give him a little time. We will. Get a chair for me. Okay. Stop snowing, anyway. Thought it was never going to stop. First rain, then snow, then rain. Weird weather. the trials this coyote's got to go through? Yes, I do. I can't watch it. Harvey, I don't know how you can stand it. Oh, sure you do. 
One day he's gonna catch that scrawny excuse for a bird and he's gonna cook him and eat him. And when he does that, I don't want to miss one bite. <laughs> Let's hope that today's not that day. You've got a meeting to get to. I gotta go back to the store. Let's not waste time. Well, we've got lots of time. What's the rush? You traveling salesman, you're all alike. We're an extinct species. Well, endangered species. Thank you. 
Bad news. There's been an accident. Not Lynn? The roof of the arena fell in and Lynn was hurt. They don't know how bad yet. Is she dead? Oh, don't tell me she's dead. No, the doctors are doing all they can. I'm sure she'll be fine. How's Paul? He's not hurt, thank God, but he's really shaken up. I've got to get him home. When you get here, you should go right to emergency. Novak's grocery. Vince, let me talk to Miriam. Mr. Little. Where is she? Mr. Lawrence. Listen, this is urgent. As soon as she comes in, get her to meet me at the hospital. There's been an accident. I don't know yet how they are. Right, Would bye. Reverend Peter Gowers, please contact emergency. Reverend Peter Gowers, please Mr. contact emergency. Mr. Novak? This way, please. Mr. Novak, there's no easy way for me to tell you what your boy. His neck was broken. He died a few minutes ago. He couldn't. The cop who helped pull him out, he said everything was going to be fine. I know there's nothing I can say. Believe me, there was nothing we could do. But we can help your little girl. Karen, who's going to be just fine? He was only eight years old. I'm very sorry. Mr. Novak, I'm going to have to ask you to sign a consent form to allow us to do certain procedures. Your daughter received a massive blow from one of the falling girders. What does that mean? If you look at these x-rays, uh, you can see that the neck of the femur is fractured and badly displaced. There's only one way to fix it, so we have to put a pin through it. After she starts healing, we can remove it again. There are some other details that we can discuss concerning your son. I don't want to hear them. Sorry to do this, but we want parents to know all the details of the truth. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Put in the pin. You do whatever the hell you have to. Security to front desk. Security, please report to front desk. Sorry I'm late, but why don't you come in after lunch tomorrow? You've got to go. Uh, Mr. Novak phoned. He said that you've got to go to the hospital, hospital? right away. What's yeah. wrong? He didn't say, just that there'd been some kind of accident. You're supposed to go. Where do they go for information, Tommy? There was normally six the nurses. Excuse me. Did you have any relatives at the arena? Uh, yes, we're just trying to find out about them. My grandson, David. Do you know where we can get some information? At the desk. Uh, could I have your name and address? We just want to find out how David is. Yes, certainly. Uh, when you find out, could you let me know? Get that thing out of here. I won't let you film this. Get the child's parents. Mama, actually, she's sitting right over there. Go there and tell them to meet me in the staff room, right?
Jason? Yes. I wonder if you could come along with me. I can't. I know what you're going to say, and I won't let you say it. She's going to be all right. She's got to be. Please come with me. We did the best we could. The little girl put up a brave fight. She died 30 minutes ago. You knew for that long and no one told me? It is an emergency, Mrs. Eastman. I'm sorry. But there are one or two things I would like you to do this. The yellow card at the front desk for you to sign is to give permission to the undertaker to take away Lynn. If you could please sign that. And the only other thing is the, the autopsy form. What autopsy? Well, the little girl died in an accident, so we want to know exactly how she died. If there were any contributing circumstances which led up to her death. Contributing circumstances? A roof fell on her and you want to perform an autopsy for contributing circumstances? We'll need to know. There may be questions of insurance. I'm sure when you've had a chance to think, you'll want to know exactly how she died. How? Oh. It doesn't matter. When you can tell me why, give me a call. They did everything they could. Doctor, he really seemed to know his job. He told me they did all they could. I know she's going to die, too. Just like Scott. No. No, all they're doing is fixing her hip. They should be finished any time. How do you know that's true? Why would they lie? Believe me. I know how you feel. No, you don't. came over to keep her company. How is she? I told her everything would be all right. That she shouldn't worry so much. Mom? I'll be home if you need me. Is she hurt bad? I heard about the accident on TV. They said a lot of people were killed. Well, not Lynn. No, Mommy. You cry. You let it all go. Oh. That's right. Saudi Arabia. S-A-U-D-I-A-R-A-B-I-A. -A -A. Dear son, stop. It grieves your mother and I to have to tell you of the death of David. Stop. He was trapped in an accident when the roof of a public building collapsed. Stop. 
There was nothing anyone could have done to save his life. We, lo uh, we love you, and may God be with you. Signed, Mother and Father. <clears throat> yes, would you read that back to me, please? Mrs. Eastman, I'm from Channel 5. I'm sorry to have to bother you at a time like this, but it's just something we have to do. You're the mother of Linda Eastman? Lynn. Her name is Lynn. I'm sorry. I'm doing a wrap-up story on the tragedy, and I have photos of all the other victims. Can't you leave this woman alone? Do you know what she's been through? I can handle this. I thought you might need help. I don't need any help. I want a picture on television. We promised to look after it. We'll take good care, and we'll return it to you. Here, I want you to have this one. Thank you. I promise to get it back to you. Have to wait long for your connection in London? Yeah, about four hours later. How are you feeling? Well? And so today, we gather together as a people who have looked into the whirlwind. In this neighborhood, there is no one who is left untouched. This isn't a time to remind us to think of other people. Everyone here is already doing that. What we do have to say to ourselves is simple, but by no means easy. Life must go on. It's true that we must live through our grief, but after that, our mourning must turn to memory, our despair to new hope. And David said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who knows 
whether the Lord will be gracious unto me and the child will live. But now that he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Garris, this is my son John, Davy's father. He works in Saudi Arabia. He was there when it happened. My condolences, Thanks. John. Oh, thank you again very much. Miriam, let's get back to work. It'll be good for us. I'm not going back to work. You've got to go back sooner or later. It might as well be now. Believe me, it's better to get it over with. Waiting won't help. I'm never going back there. You don't want us to lose the store? I don't care. I can't do it alone. I need you. Do you really think that matters? If we lose the store, if we keep the store, if we lose our house, if we keep our house? After what's happened, do you honestly think anything matters? Yes. You can have some more of that later. You know, you always did prefer it lukewarm anyway. Don't they feed you in the Arab countries? Leave them alone. It's nice to see them eat like that. It helps. Want to know something? It doesn't help. Nothing does. Let's go to bed early tonight. We're all tired. No, I'm not tired. You're never tired, are you, Dad? Never confused. All my life, you had an answer for everything. No matter what happened, God always had a reason. Well, it's true. He always does. Sure. When Joan was sick, you said God was testing our faith. When she was dead, for Christ's sake, you said it was God's will to keep her from suffering anymore. Well, what was I supposed to say? You know, the pain she had. You tell me what pain Davy had. Why did God take him? Tell me that. 
Give me your God's answer for that. Please, couldn't we all talk about this tomorrow? It's easy to see, but there's always a reason for everything. It's, it's like a big puzzle and all the pieces fit together. Only sometimes it takes a long time to see how. That's how the world is. Bullshit. The world is chaos, Dad. There's no pattern. There's no God. Or if there is, he doesn't give a damn what happens to us. I won't hear that kind of talk in my house. It's true whether you want to hear it or not. There was no grand design in that roof collapsing. The only reason it fell in is there was an inch too much snow on it, or, or, or there was a nail out of place. And the only reason Davy died a stupid, horrible death was because he was sitting in the fourth chair, not the fifth. That's your God, Dad. That's your world. What were you watching? Sounded funny. Just an old cartoon. When am I going home? Soon. Am I going to be all right? Of course you are. They wouldn't let you go home if you weren't going to be all right. But when the roof fell on... You shouldn't on, think about that, Karen. I remember Daddy told me that... Scott was going to be all right. Your daddy isn't a doctor. You mustn't think about that day. The sooner you forget about it, the quicker you'll feel better. You're going to be home in no time. So what happened on the soaps today? Well, they're trying to kill Mac, and they can't figure it out. I guess his mind is dazed by poison. Edge's night is better. When you come home, there's going to be so much to do. There better be. Time for General Hospital. How's Miriam? Oh, she's just fine. I know there's not much I can say, but Gloria and me thought a lot about you, and if there's anything we can do, all you have to do is ask. Lauren, there's nothing anyone can do, but uh, thank you for thinking. Was this, is there anything else you want? No, thanks. It's 2580 in hard, cold cash. Right. Diane, I just wanted to say that if you need any help. I don't. She did that. Come on, let's get in the greenhouse before the plant freezes. Before we freeze. Someday when trees have shed their leaves and against the morning light, the shivering birds beneath the eaves have sheltered for the night. We'll turn our faces southward, love, towards some summer isle, where bamboo spire the shafted grove and wide mouth orchids smile. I'll make a horticulturist out of you yet. Want a bit? Let's get it done. <laughs> well put. At home, these used to go right in the yard. If we went to a dance, I could just reach out the window and pluck a gardenia. I'll give it to your girlfriend, right? <laughs> Why'd you come here? I wanted to experience frostbite. <laughs> Things changed. It wasn't the same place I grew up in. What was it like when you were a kid? The whole island used to smell like a ripe fruit. The early morning was all haze. Then the sounds of growing things all around you. Come on, we better get going. Do you know how cold it is outside? Oof. I'll take it. <laughs> That's it. 
I want you to get someone else to help out uh, just for a couple of weeks. Well, Howard's on vacation. Soaking up some sun, that leaves only you. Well, there's always someone to help out. I just need some time to myself. Maybe this isn't a time when you should be alone. Well, I need time to think. <laughs> well, no one's asking you to stop thinking here. But the choice is yours, I guess. You know inside what's best for you. Oh, I gotta go. Come back quick, Kevin. The sooner you resume your normal life, the better. I know. I, uh, just have to figure something out. Bernie, you're gonna be late. I got nowhere to go. Oh, yeah? What happened to school? I can't. Look, I don't have time to argue with you. Not now. Here's my ride. How come you're not driving? Oh, the girls thought it'd be a good idea to give me a ride for a while. I've got a lot on my mind. Look, Brenda, don't give me a hassle. Well, if you can get a ride and stuff like that, I don't see why I've got to go out. I don't see why I can't stay home. My sister is dead. Look, honey. You lost a sister. My little girl's dead. I know you can't compare feelings, but I'm not moping around the house. I'm not standing around fighting. So you get moving. Now! Hi, Jenny. Well, I just wanted to see how you're doing. Don't worry about me. I'm about a day behind. Look, I just wanted to say, don't rush it. You didn't have to come back this early on. I wanted to. I mean it. So do I. Look, Jenny, there's something really nice about work. It's got to get done. And if I don't do it right, or if I slough off, then somebody else is going to finish it. Which means that everything's going to get screwed up. Well, I could cover for you. Which means that only half would get screwed up. I need the work. The only thing that seems to help. Hi's waiting for you when you get upstairs. The room's straight out there and to the right. 
Welcome home, honey. Hi, Dad. Careful. I'm not gonna break. Ladies and gentlemen, to welcome home this very famous person from the hospital who's just moved into this lovely little tent, we would like to present... Ta-da! <laughs> Daddy brought it up from downstairs. And I put all your favorite books right by your bed. Yeah, and we got cable. How am I going to reach it? We rented a converter. See? <laughs> you just press this little button here, that one, and get all the channels you want. They'll be coming out of your ears. I... <laughs> How you feeling? Okay. Uh, I think about Scott. We're not going to think about that, are we, honey? I made some cookies. I'll go get them. You better not mention it. Your mother still feels terrible. Do you feel like that, too? Sometimes. Daddy, how come I got hurt and Scotty got killed? Well, because we were sitting in the section where the roof came down. But we moved there. If we just sat where we were going to, then, then we wouldn't have been hurt. Come on, Karen, let's talk about something else, okay? Maybe your mom's right. Hey, look, we used to have a lot of fun around here, and we're going to again, huh? Hey, what do you want to watch? Oh, I know. Let's put that face healer. You know, the one that can't even grow his own hair? <laughs> yeah, I want to see his wig. Can you see over your knees? Yes. What's it look like? Putting this foolishness away. You never thought it was foolish before. Well, lots of stuff I never thought before, I'm thinking now. That's true enough. Me too. I don't suppose you want any help. No, you don't know where anything goes. Well, we've got to get everything ready. Ready? For what? I'm planning on finding some answers down here. Kind of answers. Look, everybody is still talking like this was some sort of freak accident. Well, I don't believe that. Now, I've been around buildings too long to believe that one of them is just going to fall down. There's a reason for everything. They're having an inquiry. What they call an inquiry. I'm going to do my own inquiry. Well, maybe before you start all that, you'd like to talk? I don't know enough yet to start talking enough about how you feel. I know that if I don't talk, I'm going to burst. You're the only person I can talk to. And ever since this thing happened, you won't listen. All my life I've been talking and telling people why things happened. Anybody ever wanted to know why something happened? All they had to do was ask me. That's why we have to talk. Not yet. You give me a couple of weeks, and then maybe we'll talk. And I'll have some answers. Maybe sometimes there aren't any answers. What are you going to do then? There's always an answer. You ready, Mom? I'm working at home this morning. You'll have to take the bus. That's okay. Mr. Johnson hasn't gone. I'll hook a ride with him. No. What? No rides with him. I don't want us having anything to do with him. Are you looting out? I've got reasons. Now I missed the ride. I'm gonna be late. Never mind, I'll give you a ride. I don't understand. You don't have to. I'll get my coat. Anything else, Gloria? Oh, just a minute. Thanks a lot. Uh, that'll be 23.80. Yes, I have the exact change. 21, 22, 23, 80. Thank you. Say hello to Mary. Yeah, I will. Where's the dishwasher detergent? It's in the left-hand aisle towards the wheel. No, it's not. On the center shelf. I know where it's supposed to be, but it hasn't been there for two weeks. You said you were going to get some. I'm sorry about that. Well, sorry isn't good enough. I've got a dishwasher that's stacked full of dishes. I have to take a taxi to get down here. Do you know what that costs? I should charge you. Here. 
It's 20 bucks. Go hire yourself a limousine. Just get out of my store. Harvey, uh, I didn't know if I should call. Uh, Is it okay for me to talk now? Uh, I knew how you'd be feeling. Uh, I just I wanted to call and see if you were okay, if, if there's anything I could do. Sixty, sixty-five. Is that right? Maybe business will pick up in a week. No, if you don't take your severance now, I can't even pay you that later. Sorry to have to let you go. Oh, don't worry about that. You got enough on your mind with the... Well, I'll see you later. Bye, kid. You want something? What can we buy for this? Not much. It's only a quarter. Oh. Wait, just a minute. Let me see that quarter. Oh, just what I thought. This is a very rare quarter. Very special. It's a 1974 caribou. What's that mean? Me? Means you can have any toy you see there for this quarter. What about my sister? Yeah, her too. What do you want, sweetheart? Okay. There you go. Hey, one thing. This quarter is a uh, magic quarter. It's very rare. You won't find another one just like it. Next time, the best you can hope to expect is a package of chewing gum. Okay? Off you go home. No, that's all right. You can cancel the call. Thank you. What are you doing here? Well, believe it or not, the sprinkler system came on. No kidding. <laughs> what was it like? Hey, just like that movie. You know the one where the guy dances around the rain? Singing in the rain. <laughs> Old Mr. Muir. He just kept right on using his adding machine. I was afraid the water was short out of his pacemaker. <laughs> well, we all got a holiday. Who was on the phone? No one. I was trying to reach your father again. Daddy, any luck? Well, he's left Fort McMurray. No forwarding address. Huh? He hasn't changed. Maybe he'll never know. About Lynn. Do you think we'll ever hear from him again? Not unless he gets into trouble so bad he can't lie his way out. <laughs> Brenda, we've only got each other now. 
Maybe we should try and get along a bit better, hmm? Maybe. You want me to fix supper? No. Let's send over some Chinese food, okay? Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I have this right now. Uh, so, so the change in the prevailing winds would mean that, uh, that several storms had come out of the southwest, then? Yeah. And that means that it, they would have drifted onto the north side of the roof. Well, mm -hmm. uh, now, now in, in the period that we were, we were talking about, there was 80 inches of snow, is that right? And 2.7 inches of rain. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and and the freezing rain began about 10 p.m. on the night of the 24th. Take a break. I'm sorry, there's no way. I have to stay here and figure this out. Let's go out tonight. Go to a restaurant, maybe take in a movie. I can't go out. Maybe this is a hobby or something? I think it's some kind of obsession. You've got the gall to say something like that? Do you know how much there is to do? Look at all this, and I barely scratch the surface. Do you know how long all this takes? Yes, I do. That's why they call it an obsession, Gavin. You don't have to work like this all the time. We've got things to talk about. No, we don't. Where the hell were you? It's not late. I asked you a question. I answered. Really? Okay. I was driving around with some of the kids and we stopped for a Big Mac and a shake. Why didn't you call? Or leave a note or something? Because it's not late. There's nothing to worry about. What kind of a driver was the kid with the car? You know how slippery the road is? I skidded on the way home. Well, we didn't skid. Nothing is going to happen to me. I don't want you going out with those kids with cars. If you have somewhere to go, you walk or take the bus. Oh, Mom, don't be stupid. Don't you ever talk to me like that again. I am your mother, and I won't be talked to like that. Ever. For the rest of the month, I want you home right after school. Why? Because I said so, and that's enough. No. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do now, Spanky? Brenda, you have got to start growing up. Look, it's one hell of a time for me right now. It wouldn't hurt you to spend some more time with me. When? You're never home. All you ever do is work anyway. I want to have some fun. I'm not going to mope around like you do. Don't suppose you want any supper? I told you I had a burger. Oh, great. Look, why don't you just go to your room? Get out of my sight! Right on! That's how I spend my time with you! Could I come in for a minute? I brought your cosmetics. Oh, thanks. I was just going to get ready for bed. Oh, this won't take a minute. I was thinking about Karen, wondering about her schoolwork and everything. That's very kind of you. And I remembered that we still had these books in the attic. They're out of date, but some things never change. And you're, you're welcome to use them if you feel like doing a little teaching. I don't feel up to doing much of anything right now. I used to be a teacher. I mean, I could help Karen with her schoolwork. I'm looking for something to do. You know how it is. Why don't you ask Karen? It should be her decision. Sure. Go on up and ask her. Whatever she says goes. If you'd taken the trouble to ask Brian, he would have told you where I was. Uh, hi, Mrs. Morrow. Hello, love. <laughs> Oh, what are you doing with those books? What kind are they? First, you answer my question. How do you work this thing? Easy. 
See, this one is for if you want to go forward, and this is to go back. And it's on and off. Now, well, let me see now. This is the on-off switch? Yeah. And this is off? Yeah. Hey, I wanted to watch the Muppets. They got a rerun on five. Well, they may have a rerun on five, but it's not for you. Now, to answer your question, the books are for you. And they're the kind you'd like. If Muhammad won't come to the mountain. I don't want to go to any mountain. You've got to do your schoolwork, because otherwise, when you go back to school, you won't know anything. I can watch the electric company. Karen, I used to be a teacher before I was married. And the kids all thought I was pretty good. Why, now I even bring my own books with me. And what's more, I'll help you every day. This will be more fun. We've got to get back to normal, Miriam. There's no way we can keep going on like this. I can't pretend. Damn it, no one's asking you to pretend. But if you just tried once in a while. Every time I'm aroused, I feel ashamed that I want to. And You can't stop living. I'll never get it out of my mind. Everyone else pretends nothing happened. The only one who understood was the undertaker. He didn't pretend nothing happened. I'm not pretending nothing happened. God damn it. I've got a business that's falling down around me. I'm trying to figure out where our next dollar is coming from, and I'm all alone. There's no one to help me. Miriam. Look, we've got a little girl that's still alive who needs our help. Some people lost their only child. I don't care about other people. I just know what happened in this house. That's enough to know. near him. All right, Jimmy. Do you realize how easy it is for him to get killed? Pardon? Don't you ever think that nothing can hurt your child? Come on, honey, let's go. If you go. keep that, you're a fool. A fool? alone was four feet long. Oh, his body? Oh, anywhere from 47 to 50 feet. Wow. Ah. So what did they call this one? We call him Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
the other dinosaurs didn't stick around to find out what his name was. What did the caveman call him? Tyrannosaurus Rex would be pretty hard for them to say. Oh, well, there weren't any people then. There always were people. Well, not at this time. We came later. How do we know? That's not in the book. Which brings me to the subject of evolution. Kevin, I haven't seen you in a long, long time. Well, what do you need? I need your help, George. We've all got to get together and solve this thing. Now, I've been working every day gathering evidence. But you were there. You were an eyewitness. Now, I need a, a seating plan. I need to know where everybody was sitting, as best as you can remember. Well, what the hell are you talking about? The tragedy. We've we got to figure it out. Now, look, I put all the clippings together here, and I think if you, if you can get... No. What do you mean, no? I've been working very hard to get all that out of my mind. And now, every once in a while, I don't think about it. Got to think about it. It's not going to bring Scotty or David back again. Nobody said anything about bringing anybody back. I, I just want to find out why. Why? That kind of why is easy. It was an accident. These things happen, Kevin, even to you. Even to me. The difference with us, George, is that I'm going to find out why it happened to me. expect to see you here. No, neither did I. I've got a favor to ask you. A big one. Move the box. Have a seat. Excuse the mess. They're moving me to another office upstairs. I'll make the view. I guess I better start right in. But I'd like you to keep it real quiet, okay? Okay. I've got a chance to sell the store to a chain. We might get out with the shirts on our backs if we sell now. We might, might even make a few dollars. That's great. What does Miriam think of it? She doesn't know. I didn't want to worry her anymore, and she hasn't been the same since. Well, you know how it is. Yeah, I know. Well, anyway, what they need is a good look at the books. Miriam used to take care of that, but uh, I didn't want to bother her with the way she's been feeling. I'll do it. I didn't even get a chance to ask you. Good. That way I get to volunteer. No, I'll pay you. Not if you want your books checked. Don't worry. I'll come over to your house some night. Would you come to the store? Miriam never goes near the place anymore. Sure. Look, I don't want to press, but these guys need the books as soon as they can get them. Monday night, okay? Diane. Check the date, then, see if you have them for this last week. Okay. 10th? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. These are all about that time. The one on the tenth. Mm -hmm. We have to check them off against your against your information. There's a list of stuff in my order. to talk about diane we used to always get along we weren't great friends but we were civil i'm not interested in being friends okay but i am interested in being civil i know how you feel don't ever tell yourself that you haven't got the slightest idea how i feel look we can talk let's just make an agreement you keep out of my way i keep out of yours Why? What? The greenhouse. Only you could have done it. What happened? Your mother pulled out the plug and ruined the whole greenhouse. She wouldn't do that. Mom? What right have you got? All your children and not one scratch. I'm learning she's dead. It's not fair. Did it help? <laughs> Did doing what you did help? You may never believe this, but I really do know how you feel. And I'm mad as hell at you. Listen, I got something boiling over on the stove. I'll call you back, okay? 
Yeah. Bye-bye. What was that all about? It was Gloria. She wants us to come to a party at her place. I said no. Yes, so I heard. You also said there was something boiling over on the stove? I'd have been on the phone all night if I hadn't lied. Tell her we're going. Go on, call her back. Tell her we're going. No, George. Then tell her I'm going. I can't sit around here all the time, and neither can you, Miriam. We, we can't stay in here forever. We've got to get out sometime. I don't see why not. You know what they'll all talk about. And even if no one says anything, they'll all be thinking it. Everyone will be watching us, waiting to see if we crack up. I don't want to go. Uh, yeah, Miriam said that Gloria just called. I'm not going. Yeah, well, it turns out that we can go. Right. Oh, we'll be there. Okay, bye-bye. I'm not going. <laughs> seen you for ages and I... we've all been worrying about you not the truth I feel down almost all the time I just want to stay home and do nothing Miriam if only you knew how many times I I wanted to talk with you I didn't know what to say there isn't much anyone can say you can't just sit at home thinking about what happened because the more you do that, the worse it's going to get. You can't get any worse. I'm Gloria. your friend, and we go back a long time. And that's why I'm going to level with you. Gloria, please, don't level with me. You've got to snap out of it. You can't live that way. Why not? Because if you live that way, then you're never going to be happy again. And you've got a husband, and you've got a little girl, and they need you. We change the subject. Look, if you ever do need to talk, you call me. Even at the office, you promise me that? Okay. Okay. There. That's about as much as I can read in one night. Oh, it's time to go to sleep. I'm not sleepy. Well, I am. Maybe I should babysit. That's not a bad idea. Good night, Karen. Can you keep a secret? Sure I can. I've got something to show you. Why is it a secret? Because I'm not supposed to think about Scar. Every time I tried to talk about what happened with Mom or Daddy, he told me not to talk about it. Well, I never told you that. You see, Karen, I'm not meant to talk about it either, about David. But uh, I always wondered, did you see him at the arena that day? Sure I did. He was sitting near me. Then we moved because some kids were making a lot of noise. Were you scared when it happened? Not when it happened. It was all so quick. I was scared afterward. But then Daddy got me out and I knew I was okay. Sometimes I wake up in the night and I feel real bad. And what do you do then? 
I just lie there and I tell things to myself. Like it's okay, I'm all right, and I'm going to get better. Then I think about Scott, and I feel real bad. I was really mean to him the day he was killed. I called him stupid. Now I never could tell him I'm sorry. I feel just the same way about David. I remember all the things I meant to do with him. How I always put it off for another day. He wanted me to take him to the Metro Zoo. So I was planning to do that in the summer. But you did lots of other stuff with him. Did you tell him about Mohammed in the mountain? <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> and if you think, you'll remember all sorts of nice things you said to your brother. Sorry. Well, that's what you remember. But don't you ever forget him, will you, Karen? No. Now I feel better. Good. So do I. That's what friends are for, isn't it? Yes. Would you like to watch some TV? No, I'm just going to think, okay? Okay. give you a drive if you just wait for a minute. No, I want to get there early. You just want to be gone before the Johnsons come out, don't you? You blame me? No. Look, I understand what's going on. You're too young to, to know that, Brenda. No. Now that I've got it worked out, I can understand what you did. But I know more than you do, because I figured out one more thing. You're wrong, Mom. Okay, now which one are you working in? Yeah. Six yeah. into one eleven. Okay, now what I do is I go six into eleven, right? Yeah, six into eleven goes one. So you put one up there? Yeah. But then you... Then six times one is six. Oh, and I see. You put it down there. here. Okay. Subtract. Okay, so subtract six from eleven. Five. Five. Bring on the one. Aha. Uh -huh. Good, okay, so six into fifty-one. Goes eight times. So eight up here. Six times eight, what is it? Oh, and then you put it down here. Yeah. Okay. Well, they all say there was nobody to blame. It was just a fluke of weather conditions and stress in areas where stress didn't normally occur. Do you really think someone's trying to hide something? Well, I did for the longest time. I figured there had to be some sort of bloody cover. Now, maybe not. Even if there was a cover-up, that wouldn't bring back Davy. It would have showed me why. That's all I really wanted was to find out why. Even if you found out, say, that a beam had been put in wrong or something like that, that wouldn't mean anything. That's why it's so unfair, Betty. It's so unfair. I think Davy was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's how simple that is. You know there was nothing you could have done to prevent it. Suppose
supposing there had been something we could have done. My God, how we'd feel. Did it never occur to you that my schedule might change? Suppose there had been somebody else in this room. He would have been out of luck, too. You don't beat around the bush, Miriam. It's the first thing I noticed about you. I was a woman. That was the first thing you noticed about me. How's it been? Bad. But I'm beginning to pull out of it. Just a bit. I, uh... Everyone keeps giving me advice. You're not gonna give me advice, are you, Harvey? Deep freezer salesmen only give advice about deep freezers. We meant a lot to each other, and I... just didn't want things to end with me hanging up the phone. I realized we were together when the accident happened. Right to the minute. I figured you would never even want to think of me again. You had nothing to do with it. I figured out what I was going to say on the phone. It was going to be a short talk, kind of like a sales pitch, just telling you that you couldn't have known what was going to happen. And that what we were doing had nothing to do with what happened. That I hung up on you. Well, this happens to sales pitches. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I'm starting to work things out. And I... I know. No more phone calls, no more meetings. You understand? Yeah. I understand. Miriam, you take real good care of yourself. Always said, are you going to give me advice? Second, I just gotta ring the stuff in. Please find this audit to our satisfaction and if the negotiated terms are still agreed to, then the sale will be effective at the price negotiated as of the 15th day of this month. I was saving it as a surprise. What the hell have you been up to? Look, you've been under a lot of stress. You're goddamn right. I've been under a lot of stress. And so have I. I go home. And you stripped out Scotty's room. I thought it would help. Do you know how it felt 
Walking in there and seeing everything gone? I thought it would help. You've been so wound up in yourself, you can't see anyone else. Then I walk in here and, and you're going to sell the store out right from under me. Not a word about it. It was either that or go bankrupt. Oh, things are not that bad. They're worse. They're worse than you can ever believe. You see that pile of bills? Not one paid. I don't believe it. You think time just stood still while you were feeling sorry for yourself? Not goddamn likely. You know, I used to envy you for feeling so bad. I figured if I could just give up like you did, I wouldn't have to worry. I did not give up, Joe. Oh. You, you should have given me a little time. I gave you lots of time. Well, I'm just starting to pull out a bit of it. Are you? Yes. But you've got to help me. Who helps me? I can try to. I'll prove it. I'll open up the store again. We can see if we haven't scared off all the customers. I'm not sure that I can. Then what you've been saying is bullshit. That's it. Plain and simple. Miriam. Here, you try running this place by yourself, why don't you? Find out what I've been doing. Package a matinee, please. You back? Oh, I'm not really sure if I am back. I see. So, how did your thinking go? Did you come up with any answers? When David was killed, it was. Well, I don't know what it was like. It's just that I didn't believe it for the longest time. Pretended it didn't happen. Go on. All my life I've lived a good life. Gone to church. Tried to be as good a person as I could be. Oh, I don't mean to say I was a, a saint or anything. But I always tried to do the right things as much as I could manage. I don't think there's a reward system. Well, I always thought there was. And now I'm... I'm angry with God. I, I feel like I'm losing my faith. I'm not a man who scares easy. But that scares me. Even if you tried, do you think you could just stop your doubts now? No. But I thought you could help. Well, all I can tell you is if you do come through this, and you still have your faith, it will mean more to you than it ever did. But I can't answer your questions for you, you know that.
Nothing. But what you know her, how you feel or anything. All my life I've had a hell of a time telling anybody I was wrong. I can't even tell my own daughter. There's something you should know about me. Just the way I've always been. Always got me in lots of trouble. Always. I just wanted to tell you that I was wrong. going on? I don't know why you gave up so easily. I've been going over this stuff all night. I think there's a way we can save things. Miriam, I know what you're trying to do, but I, I can't see a way. Of course you can't. You're not a bookkeeper. No, but Diane is. She went over the book. She couldn't find a way. It's not her store. Let's go over the books in the morning. Don't expect too much from me right away. It'll take a while for things to get back to normal. All I ever wanted was the chance. the worst disaster of the community's history occurred. This is the place of the accident that just happened. It was a one-in-a-million fluke, an inquiry said this week. The stadium's open again now. Repairs have been made. And the stadium manager says it's perfectly safe. Now, people go about their lives as before. The neighborhood is gradually getting back to normal, and it looks like an important part of the community has been restored. What of those who suffered the terrible death of a child? Most of them have remained in the neighborhood and picked up the pieces of their lives. Miriam and George Novak, for example, continue to run their corner grocery store despite the added pressures of today's economy, and they tell us they're even managing to break even. For Diane Eastman, however, whose daughter Lynn was killed, the stress of remaining in the same place proved too much. At her request, the firm that she works for transferred her to Vancouver. Kevin Morrow, a deeply religious man, told Channel 5 he had suffered a severe crisis of faith when his grandson was killed. He told us that thoughts of suicide crossed his mind. He has, however, returned to his job as sexton of his church. This is Jennifer Egan for Channel 5 News. Next week, be sure to watch my special report on the single scene across our country. <laughs>